Hi guys, Kotutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you have seen how to access our web services either on the emulator or the device. In this video, we will continue to explore the web services concept. We will be mainly concentrating on basics of API integration from the client application that is Android application perspective. If you recall, during the discussion of Android data persistence, I had said that as far as web service integration is concerned, the prerequisites are XML and JSON parsing, threads, async tasks, and some basic idea of web services. In case of mobile application, XML is very rarely used. So that is why we will not be discussing the XML. And when it comes to threads and async tasks, they have already been discussed on CoTutor. The next part was you should have had a very basic idea of how web services work. And that was the whole idea of initial three videos in the current series before this particular video. And the last part is JSON parsing. We will not be doing a very detailed tutorial on how to parse a JSON, but I will be making a passing reference about some of the APIs that we typically use in JSON parsing like JSON object or JSON array. To understand the basics of API integration, we will try to understand it through a sample to-do list application wherein the basic operation that we will be having a look at is the author registration before he gets started with the insertion of to-do items in the backend. So right now the demo overview will mainly consist of selecting the API endpoint and you have to remember this particular selection because the next time the application boots up, you want to select that preferred selection. Next step is basically to open the dialog to register a new user if the user has not yet registered. And the third step is write the working code to hit the backend with the proper payload and then finally save the username on successful registration that is for future logins. And if you think of the operations here and the kind of frameworks that we will be using to accomplish these operations is to remember the user selection of whether local host or remote was used and also the future user logins, we will be using shared preferences. You will be using a dialog fragment to register a new user. And then the third step, which is the most important step, it consists of many things, hitting the backend. This needs to be done on a separate thread and that is where your understanding of threads will come into picture and you have to send this particular request using a proper payload and that is where your JSON parsing concept comes into picture and then most importantly you have to write proper working code through certain set of APIs that Android provides to actually create the restful request and hit the backend. So if I try to put it in a nutshell basically what happens is you have a main thread but you cannot continue to do any major work on the main thread because the request response may take more than five seconds so that is why you offload your network related work on a separate thread and once you get the response back from the backend in the thread you once again come back to the main thread to update the ui and this is the typical way of functioning you will see throughout the whole web service integration so having understood this theoretically let's have a look at it through a demo so this is the code the name of the application is Android rest web service integration we have a application config which extends application this is similar to application context but it is our own application context that we have customized and if you open the manifest file the application name actually refers to the class which implements application class and here I have written some methods which specifically refer to saving certain values to a shared preferences I have written here a utility class which does JSON parsing. You can actually have a look at attributes methods that are declared in this particular class. And then you have a utility method to check whether app is online or offline. And then here we have declared the bean classes corresponding to author and to do item. And then you have a UI package under which I have a activity and dialogues sub package. Activity is pretty straightforward. It is the same scheme that you have seen some time back. And then you have a register fragment dialog. And this actually refers to this particular dialog that gets popped when you click on the register button. 
and it is in this particular register dialog where we will be mainly concentrating our discussion today once again you are already familiar with how to set up a dialog fragment so that part i will not be going through the main idea is what happens once the user enters all the values and clicks on the register button and as you can see here when the user clicks on the register button you are actually going to call a method called as login and in the login we are patching the username email id and password and then we are constructing a author author is nothing but a bean class with author id author name email id and password right now we are not setting the author id we are setting it as zero but but on successful registration we will be getting a author id we will check if the app is online and then when you are hitting the back end you need to tell the user a, some kind of a feedback saying that the application is busy with fetching the data from the back end and this is typically done through by showing busy dialog box so you have a progress bar in the ui and we basically want to show that particular progress bar before we start the thread to hit the back end and then we start the thread the thread takes a runnable instance which is register author and here in the register author we will be writing our code to hit the back end the first api that we will be having a look at is http url connection this is the api using which you will be constructing your http request so let's get started the next important step is create url and after that we will use a method called as url dot open connection which returns me http url connection but it still doesn't have many other information like what is the content type whether this particular http request would be doing any input or whether it is getting any output if it contains the header what are the values of the header so i will set the read timeout to 2 seconds and then i will set connection timeout to 4000 milliseconds which is 4 seconds and then you have to set the request method so in this case register is post http request method and then you have to tell whether this particular http request is doing any input and then we are also doing set to do output equals to true and after that i have to set the request header property which is content type application json and after that i have to construct json request body which is the author which will be going as a part of the request payload and this will be set to http request http url connection dot get output stream will return me the data output stream and then to that data output stream i will be writing author json object dot to string which will be a stringified version of json object and then i just flush the output stream before closing it and after that i do the http request that is done through http url connection dot connect so i want to check what is the response code and if it is a 201 then only i want to proceed further to parse whatever the response that i have got and store it in the string object response and if at all you want to convert whatever the response that you have got into a object i will be using the get author method from the to do json parsers this will basically parse string that we have got in the response into a actual java object so once we have got the value that we want we need to update the ui so for that we have to get hold of the activity and then we have to say run on ui thread and inside the run method i am toasting a message that is registration success and then i have callback interface our activity actually implements this particular interface if you go back to the main activity it implements registration listener which is on registration success and what it basically does is it saves the username of the successful registered user in the shared preference and sets it to the main activities username edit text field and that is what you will see here and after that you need to just dismiss the registration pop-up dialog and that's it so let's actually see what happens when we run the application in the debug mode 
So as you can see right now, I am showing a busy window on the UI thread and since it is the UI thread, it can continue on its own. But in the separate thread, I have now started the registration procedure. So what does it look like? I set the URL and then I instantiate the HTTP URL connection, then go through setting various other attributes. And after that, I'm initializing the JSON object with author email ID, author name, and author password. And then I write it through the HTTP URL connection and then dot connect. And then I am waiting for the response. And once the response is got, I check whether it is true, not one, and then go through the passing procedure and get hold of response and this is what response consists of author object with a author id initially if you recall the author id was zero because we had not registered it and then after that toast registration successful and you set the app user to the main activities username and this is a typical bare minimum thread based restful request looks like in android from this you might have already realized that writing these kind of runnable instances for each request is a very primitive way of doing it there has to be a better way of managing this whole process the only better solution is using some of the ready to use libraries which help you to do this in an efficient manner you might have already heard some of those libraries like OK HTTP, Wally, Retrofit. So in the next video, I will be talking about how to do the same thing using OK HTTP. So stay tuned for the next video. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.